people ask me sometimes, when, when do you think it will be enough? When will, it, will there be enough women on the court? And my answer is, when there are nine. This show, called When There Are Nine, the impetus for it is twofold. One is uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the Supreme Court Justice, who throughout her life has put so much emphasis on the rights of women and men. Another reason was the recent 100th anniversary of women's right to vote. That's really important to me and also important for women in general to bring women's compassion, women's strength, women's resilience to the show. And I have a powerhouse of women who are here with me. They are women from all over the local Detroit area. They are women who I have admired their work. I chose them because I knew that they would bring their own voice and power as a woman to the show, and I'm really proud of it. I have five pieces here, and this particular piece that I am holding, it is um, called The Personification of Justice. What I have here is a figure that comes from Ghana. It's called the Akuba, and she is wearing or holding the scales of justice and also a sword, and it represents to have justice for all people because oftentimes a lot of people that are black do not get the justice that is supposed to be guaranteed by the Constitution of the United States of America. So that is what this figure represents. The Anne White Gloves is a tribute to strong women, particularly black women. I was down in the South and I went into an antique shop and found these gloves. And I asked the lady, what are these gloves? What's representation of these gloves? She said, they're Civil War gloves. And she goes, they were used by black servants because they weren't allowed to touch the food unless they were wearing gloves. So that automatically, I knew that something had to be done about that. So I purchased them and I went with my friend, B, became my collaborator. And we did this piece called Beyond White Gloves because now she owns them. They're hers and they have nothing to do with anybody else. The first series I'd like to share with you is about loss. Um, it is a series of red dresses. The reason I did these paintings is because I learned about um, an installation artist named Jamie Black, and she does installations of real uh, dresses in trees outdoors, and it is to represent or symbolize those women who are missing and murdered. They are indigenous women from both the United States and Canada. When I saw the dresses of Jamie Black's installation, I was pulled in because of, of their loss. Um, we all lose people for different reasons, and those are significant things that we often don't talk about in our lives, and we don't share. These dresses are about bringing awareness. My pieces in the When There Are Nine show are from a body of work I made called The Gun Show. They're repurposed prom dresses and bridesmaid dresses. And they have guns um, that have been used in specific mass shootings around our country and bordered on them. And so each gown has a title that correlates with that shooting. The one behind me is called Sunday Best, and that gown refers to the shooting at the Charleston Church a few years ago. A little bit down, further down in this show is a gown called uh, Big Guns, Little People, and that gown is about the Newtown, Connecticut shootings. And it was important for me to make those guns to scale. I really wanted people to wrap their mind around the size of the weapon that was used on these little kids. When I first really started doing research, it was very depressing to read all the details, to read about the, in the actual inaction of uh, our lawmakers to make any sort of decisions that would keep people safer. You know, I, as a matter of fact, didn't know if I had the stomach to finish this project. And I thought, you know what, if the people uh, that are going through these experiences can pick up and move on and keep going on with life, I can at least open my eyes wide open and walk through this and read about their experiences and create these pieces to uh, encourage conversation about a really difficult subject. Uh, the piece behind me is the Garden of Good and Evil. 
and it's basically about rumors and how we talk about people and how it can hurt them and to try to see no evil, hear no evil, do no evil. And then I did a piece over there with a baby because the, the children that are being at the border is, has broken my heart that they're being taken away from their families. And I started with a doll and putting it over it and carving words out like mommy, daddy, I'm sad, where are you? And it was my way of, of, of saying, this is wrong. Why are we doing this? And the back of it, I put the words from the Statue of Liberty, bring me your, your poor, your wretched, yearning to breathe free. And, and that's not what's happening. So it, I've cried a lot over that. This is a painting, it's a self-portrait, and it's called So Proudly We Hail. And it's based on Jasper John's flag from the 1950s, in which Jasper John, at the time in which the flag was gaining quite prominence, made his version of the American flag, and this is my reference to his flag. You see a mime back here, right? And the mime's in action. What's the mime doing? Putting hands over the ears, or are the hands coming away from the ears? Are the eyes just closed, or are the eyes going to open? Is the mind finally going to say her piece? And does she have an opinion about something? I want you to think about what you would see in this painting rather than me telling you what the symbolism is. The second series of paintings that I did is they're about my mom. She's the woman that empowered me and a big reason for having this show. Her name is Dorothy Maida Trongo. Uh, she raised eight children with a lot of humor and dedication. And I did this piece of her called Dorothy's Final Vote. Is it, it is about her voting at a nursing home when she was 88 years old. She was really proud of all the women that are involved in politics today. And she was really excited to see that there was going to be a woman running for president. I'm really proud of my mom and her involvement in, and her awareness of what's going on in our country and fighting for women. The other artists who are involved in this show, I know that they feel very strongly about women and women's causes. And I knew that the focuses that they would choose for this show would speak for women and that they would be a voice for women and that they would elevate women. Right now it's time for women artists to speak out. So all of my pieces in this show have a strong statement about some of our problems, some of the things we have to overcome, and some of the things that have been overcome already for us. Pay attention, listen. We're here to say something to you. We have something to say. People should find their meaning through our pieces. Our pieces should talk to people. We are first and foremost artists, and we also are women, and that if we can resonate and speak to you through our work, make you think about things a little different, then we've succeeded as artists. This exhibit with the nine women in it has been a really powerful thing to be a part of. You know, I think the power of coming to a show like this and seeing the work is the diversity of work that's available, the diversity of issues that women talk about, and to realize what a kaleidoscope of thoughts and different materials the artists have used, the way they've gotten their ideas across. It's, it's a gorgeous bouquet of work. All of the pieces here from different uh, perspectives, different thoughts, just includes more people because oftentimes even back then um, African American women were not included. But we've come a long way and in this beautiful exhibition you see the bringing together of different cultures blending well. And what you have here is a lot of different women showing their different ideas of what motherhood is, of what it is to be a woman, and also in the context of how it makes the world a better place to live. Showing the community the different aspects of everybody's imagination and their courage to, to put this stuff to fruition, to put it on, on paper or build it, you know. It's, it's a good thing. It's good for the community and, and women in general. And the arts, they bring, they, they bring about a sense of history, a sense of ourselves, a sense of our worth. That awareness brought to a community is emotive. And it is important that we, we share our feelings 
and our, our needs and our wants with each other. And I hope that people will learn something from this event, um, will take something home with them from this event that is meaningful to them, that they create their own love, compassion, all the things that we need.